Today we're talking about flash exposure memory. What is it and how do you use it? I'm gonna tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there everyone, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. If it's one that I think is gonna help a lot of other photographers, I might pick your question to answer here on a future show. This week I've got one sent in by Craig S. who wants to know, Quite often in teaching videos, photographers utilize TTL flash when first shooting and then switch to manual. How is that done? Does the flash retain the same settings going from TTL to manual? Also, how does shooting TTL help you in switching to manual anyway? Thanks Craig for sending that in. It's a good question. Now to understand how and why this works, we first need to talk about TTL flash and understand the limitations that it has. Now TTL is a metering mode for your flash. It literally stands for through the lens, TTL, because it figures out the flash exposure by looking at the light that is coming back from your subject and coming into the camera through the lens. TTL is separate from exposure metering for your camera exposure. The camera and flash actually talk to each other to determine how much light the flash should be putting out, not what the camera exposure should be. Now before TTL, the early auto flash metering modes only read the light that was bouncing back into the flash unit and was not looking at it through the lens. It's usually more accurate to read it off the sensor itself in the camera because that's more relevant to your final image. How it works is it fires a low power pre-flash to figure out how much light to send out for the real exposure that happens immediately after that. Now TTL is an amazing technology, but like any automatic mode, it can't always know what creative decisions you wanna make as the photographer. In general, what it does is it averages out the scene and tries to average out your exposure, giving you sort of a mid-level exposure, not too bright and not too dark. Exposures can actually be inconsistent depending on how you frame your image. I'll, t I'll explain how, right? Last night, I was taking pictures of some gear that I'm selling and I came across this exact problem. I'm finally parting ways, by the way, with my 5D Mark IV, a bunch of 600 EXRT speed lights and some other EF bodies and lenses. You can DM me on Instagram, I'm at David Bergman if you're interested in any of that. But anyway, promo aside, I had a speed light and a softbox and had a simple setup for the products on plexiglass with a piece of black cardboard underneath it. Now I'm using the Canon R5 body and the 24 to 105 f4 lens and I'm on manual exposure. I'm at f8, 200th of a second at 320 ISO. Now when I used TTL on the flash and zoomed into the framing that I wanted, the flash actually did a pretty good job averaging out the scene and giving me a good exposure for both the bright and the dark areas of the image. So TTL did exactly what it was supposed to do. I then decided that for this video that I wanted to zoom out and take a picture of the entire setup. Now without changing any settings, I just zoomed out my lens and took another shot on TTL. Then you could see the difference. It's considerably darker. Why did that happen? Well, the TTL system did what it's supposed to do. It saw a lot more of the white seamless paper in that wide shot. So when it averaged out that scene, it darkened everything more than it did in the tight shot. Now, of course, I could brighten that wide shot up using flash exposure compensation, or I could do it in post considering I'm shooting raw files. But that's gonna take some time, and I might never be able to exactly match the brightness of the two frames without a lot of trial and error. I'd have to put both on the screen, compare them back and forth so that I got it really looking just perfect. Situations like this is where TTL doesn't work very well. If you change your composition in any way, you're shooting different angles, like shooting from another direction, or you're zooming in and out, there's a good chance that the TTL system is gonna change the output of your flash from frame to frame. Now, I do realize that some newer cameras have flash metering modes to help with this exact problem. The Canon R5 that I was using, for example, has an evaluative with face priority mode where it'll use face detection to know that there's a face and it's gonna try to keep the exposure consistent no matter how big or small that face is in the frame. But it still might not be perfectly consistent if you change the angle that you're shooting from. So this is when you'd put your flash in manual mode. By setting it on manual, you can choose exactly how much light you want the flash to be putting out and that won't change from frame to frame, no matter what it sees through the lens. You're on manual, it's exactly the same every single frame, regardless of anything else. Now, my general rule of thumb is that when I'm shooting something where the flash to subject distance doesn't change at all, I'm gonna shoot manual every single time. So that means things like portraits, where I've got speed lights on stands and my subject is staying in place, I'm all manual. 
or at a small venue concert where I have been known to mount speed lights around the club with different colored gels on them and create my own little light show. Those lights don't move during the show. So I'm gonna set them on manual and the same amount of light is gonna come out every time I push the button, no matter where I'm shooting from. If I'm right up front, if I'm in the back, if I'm off to the side, shooting wide, shooting tight, doesn't matter. And yes, even shots like the ones I did last night of the gear that I'm offering for sale, those lights obviously don't move as I'm shooting frame to frame. Now, I absolutely do use TTL when the flash to subject distance is constantly changing. In a run and gun type situation, like if I'm backstage at a concert and I'm photographing my client as they walk around, then yes, TTL is the way to go. There's no way I could possibly adjust the flash exposure manually from frame to frame as I get closer or further away from my subject. But when I want consistency for something that's not moving, it's manual mode all the way with my flash. So that's the situation. Now you've decided, I've convinced you, that you're gonna put your flashes or flash or flashes on manual mode. How do you know what to set them on? What power level do you use for that manual flash? There are actually two ways to figure this out. The first, simply guess, right? You could just guess. With experience, you might be able to get close on the first shot. With my pictures last night, I found that one eighth power on the flash was right where I wanted it to be. But it's gonna take you some time and some trial and error. So if that's the case, is there a faster way to do it? This finally brings me back to Craig's question. When you shoot TTL, it normally doesn't tell you how much power that flash is putting out on that TTL exposure. Some flash transmitters, not all, now have a way to start on TTL, take a picture, then switch over to manual, and it's gonna keep the power setting that the flash decided was the best in the TTL frame right before it. The Flashpoint R2 Pro has had this for a while and it is super helpful. Last night I was using a speed light, Canon speed light, and recently Canon updated the STE3RT flash transmitter to version two. Now there are actually some good updates with this uh, new version, including finally allowing for wireless second curtain sync. Thank you, Canon, for doing that. Um, if you're buying the transmitter new today, it should be the version two. If you already have the first version, you can actually send it to Canon for a paid upgrade to version two. Be aware that the new functions are only gonna work with the newest cameras, so make sure you read all the fine print before you pay to have your, your transmitters updated. Now anyway, one of the other new updates in the version two is that they added an FE memory mode. That stands for flash exposure memory. You simply have to activate the function for it to work. What you do is you go to custom functions, then into personal functions, and it's number eight. You switch FE from off to on, and you're ready to go. Now, now what you do is you start on TTL. You get your framing how you want, and you take a picture. Now, like I said, when framed tight, my exposure looked good on TTL. Then I switched over to manual because I wanted consistent exposures when I zoom in and out or if I move the camera. And normally, switching to manual would default to full power and I'd have to start guessing to dial in the exposure I want. But since I have the FE function on, when I switch to manual mode, it keeps the same exact power that it decided on the last TTL frame. In this case, it went right to eighth power. Now, of course, I can adjust it from there if I want my image to be brighter or darker, but that's what FE memory does. Now, Craig asked at the end of his question how TTL actually helps when switching to manual. Why would you even bother doing this? Well, it really simply just gives you a good starting point and could save you time over guessing. If you've got multiple flashes going off, you can set them up one at a time on TTL to get your exposures close, then switch over to manual and make any little small adjustments you need to make and lock in each flash. Then you can shoot away with everything on manual and ex your exposures are gonna be consistent from frame to frame. It's really a nice way to go. So there you have it, that's how it works and why you might use it. Do you shoot with TTL? Which flash system do you use? And does it have that function that keeps your power setting uh, when you switch from TTL to manual? I'm not sure which flashes have it and which don't. So if you have it, let me know down in the comments below. If you don't have it, how do you get your flash exposure on manual? Do you just guess? Or do you shoot TTL all the time and never go over to manual? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious what you all are doing as far as that goes. If you like this video, click that thumbs up below and don't forget to send in your own questions by going to askdavidbergman.com and filling out that form. If you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon while you're there. That way you'll be notified as soon as new shows come out all week long for myself and the other hosts right here on Adorama TV. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you'll come back next time when I've got another question to answer right here on Ask David Bergman.